In this video, we look at linear regressions. So linear regressions, actually any regressions, are used to find a relationship between two variables. In this case, we're going to focus on the linear regressions, which means that the data will give a straight line. So if we plot the one variable against the other, so the dependent versus the independent, we should find that the data tends to be a straight line. So that's what our focus is in this uh, lesson. The idea here is that it's used to find, any regression is used to find an equation of a line or curve of best fit. Again, we're going to focus on the line of best fit, and that equation can be used to interpolate or extrapolate. So interpolation is reading using the line to make predictions within the domain of the values that you have already, and extrapolating is to use it to go beyond the values that you have already to make some predictions. So in order to do this, we use a method called the least squares fit method. So in grade nine, you make scatter plots, you draw a line of best fit by kind of eyeballing where the line should go. You try to get uh, a, an equal number of points above and below the line uh, and try to get as many points on the line as possible. In this course, we look at how do we find the one line of best fit, and that's what we're going to do today. So it uses the least squares method. You can see some points on the graph. So here's a point right in here. We've got a few points and so on. And you can see the squares here. I'll talk a little bit about those in a minute. But first, we should talk about this thing called a residual. So residuals basically are the difference in the y values between a data point and the y values on the line of best fit. So if we look at this point right up here, the residual here is the difference between the y value right here and the y value on a line of the point that would be on the line for this particular x value, whatever x happens to be here. So the residual is this value right here. And the idea here is that um, the residuals above the line are positive, so all of the residuals that result from points above the line are positive residuals, and all of the residuals below the line are negative, so these are all negative residuals for points below the line. And when we do this, essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the line in a location where the sum of the residuals is going to be zero. So if we add up all of the residuals, we take the ones on top, which are positive, and we add in the ones on the bottom, which are negative, we should get a sum total of zero. That's kind of the goal here. And the other goal that we're trying to do is we're trying to make the areas of these squares. So if I, if I have a residual right here that joins the point and uh, sorry, the point, the actual data point and the point on the line of best fit, I can make a square with that line. So the same distance going horizontally as we went vertically and create a square. This square has an area in here. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so that all of these sums, sorry, the sum of all of the areas of these squares is as small as possible. So we're trying to make make it so that when we add up all of the areas here, we get the smallest possible number. That's the goal here with this least squares fit method, is to get the sum of the areas of the squares to be as small as possible. That's I wanted to give you that. It's a nice visual of what happens. Uh, let's look now algebraically at how we do this. Um, we're not too concerned. Obviously, you don't have to go through and draw a whole bunch of lines and add up the areas of the squares and so on. Somebody has gone through and figured out the best way to do that for us, and we're going to look at that method right now. So we're talking about linear regressions. We're talking about straight lines. Any straight line should have the form that looks like this. y equals the slope times the x value plus the b value, often called y equals mx plus b. Lots of textbooks, for whatever reason, use an a here instead of an m but it's just the slope, and the b value is just the y-intercept. And when I said that somebody has gone through the trouble of doing all of the work for us, here is that work right here. They've figured out how we find the slope. So this is a long-looking formula. Don't be afraid of it. We'll work, th work through it and figure out how, how it works. Um, and the hard part actually is just sort of laying out information in a table. The rest comes fairly easily. The B value is determined by this formula here. Just a reminder that X bar is the mean of the X's. 
So that's the mean of the x values. And the y bar is the mean of the y values. The only thing that you really need to know, I think, in the equation for A is that N is the number of data points. And the rest we'll kind of look at here. So the X's, if we were to graph this, this is just a time and distance, so we'll look at this example. There's a set of data, time and distance, and we're going to find the equation of the line of best fit. If we were to graph this, time would be independent. Distance would be dependent, and we would see a graph that might look something like this. The idea is that we're trying to find the equation of that line of best fit. We're using a ruler, of course. Get a line of best fit, and we want to find the equation of that. So you, looking at our data, time are the x values, the distance are the y values. You can see in this equation, we are going to need, I should mention here, the sigma just means the sum of, so this means the sum of the xy's. So we will take our x's and multiply them by our y's and add those all up. Sum of the x's, just add up all the x's, add up all the y's, and it's the number of data points. The sum of the x squared, so we need a column for x squared. Now be careful here, this line uh, part of the equation right here is quite different from this one it looks very similar but here we take the x's squared and add them all up here we take up all of the x's and square them so we'll see what that looks like in the table so we need a couple extra columns in our table let's add those in oh I didn't do a very good job there these uh, it doesn't matter let's make them the x squareds so we take our x's that's these values over here and we square them 1 squared is 1 2 squared is 4 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. So those are the x squareds. The other thing, piece of information that we need are the x values multiplied by the y values. So x times y. That's really just doing this. x times y. 1 times 2.1. Well, that's 2.1. 2 times 2.5. That's just equal to 5. And then we're going to keep going and filling in the, the values here as we go. So 3 times 2.8 is 8.4. Try to keep things lined up here. I uh, should have made a table ahead of time. 4 times 3.5 is 14. And 5 times 4.5 is 22.5. So as I mentioned earlier, we need the sum of all of these things. So let's have a column here for the sum. Not a column, sorry, a row. So the sum will add up all of the times, 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, that gives us 15. Add up all of the distances, so if we add all of those together we get 15.4. Next up we add all of the x squared, so all of the x squareds add to 55. So that's just taking these values and adding them up. And then we can add up the xy's. So the xy's, if we add up those values, we should get a sum of 52. Now the other thing that we needed, I, I'm going to do it now just so that I have the space and don't forget. Uh, we need the, the mean of the x values and we need the mean of the y values. To find the mean of the x's, we add them all up. We've already done that. So let's, uh, let's put the means in here. So we have a sum of 15 for the x's. We want to divide by however many x's there were. There were five of them, so 15 divided by 5 gives us a total of 3. And then we do the same thing for the y's. So the y's added to 15.4. We divide that by 5, and we should get 3.04. We divide by 5 because to find the mean, you add them all up and divide by how many there are. All right, I think we have everything that we need now to calculate A. So I'm going to start by writing out the formula here for A. So A is equal to N times the sum of the XY's minus the sum of the X's times the sum of the Y's divided by N times the sum of the X squareds minus the sum of the x's squared. So we talked already about that difference. We'll be careful here. Alright, let's plug in some values. 
So remember, n is the number of data points. We can count them up. We've done that already to find the mean. So there are five data points. The sum of the xy's, we look in the xy column, that's here. The sum is 52. So 5 times 52 minus the sum of the x's, that's right there, 15, times the sum of the y's, again right here is 15.4, that's the numerator, and then the denominator is n, which is the number of data points, times the sum of the x squareds, that's this value right here, the sum of the x squareds is that x squared column, we add it all up, we get 55. Oh, that's a really bad looking five. Sorry about that. I'll try to tidy that up a bit. All right, so hopefully we don't forget that's a 55. And then this column here is the sum of the x's squared. So we actually take the sum of the x column, which is 15, and we're going to square it. So 15 squared. Oh, I forgot a bracket over here. All right, so now we can go ahead, evaluate the numerator, and evaluate the denominator. So 5 times 52 minus 15 times 15.4 and we should get a result of 29 here and we do the same thing in the denominator and we get 50 see if I can squeeze this in there 29 divided by 50 is 0 0.58 that is our a value that's the slope of the line now that we have it we can use it to find the b value so b is equal to y bar minus a x bar. And we've already calculated those things, right? x bar is right here, y bar is right here. So the b value then is 3.04 minus the a value, which we calculated earlier. We'll just pop that in here 0.58. times x bar, and our x bar was here, which was 3. So now we plug that into the calculator, 3.04 minus 0 0.58 times 3. Well, let's try that again, that's really messy. So b should equal, if we've done the calculation correctly, 1.34. Now remember the whole point of this, was to find the equation of a line. We found the y-intercept, we found the slope, so the equation of the line there that connects A and B, or the equation of a line of best fit, is just y equals A, which was 0 0.58, x plus B, and B is 1.34. So this right here is the equation of the line of best fit. We can, oh, we can then make Let's try that again. We can then make some predictions about certain values with that equation. So maybe we want to know what's the distance traveled at um, at a time of two. So if, if time is measured in seconds and distance is measured in meters, what's the distance when time is 2.5 meters? We could just plug the 2.5 in here. Or we could go the opposite direction and ask something like, um, how long will it take to travel five meters? So if this was seconds, the distance goes in here. So we could substitute five meters into the equation and then solve for x. So that's that's how we find the equation of the line of best fit. It is a long process. It's kind of tedious, but it's not a very difficult one. The table here helps because once you have the table, you have the uh, all of the values and you just need to plug them into the equation. So that's how we can find uh, an equation of a line of best fit and do what we call a linear regression. There are other ways to do this. We'll look at some of those as well uh, using some technology. In fact, you could do this whole table using technology, but I wanted you to see how this process worked.